Hi everyone, my name is Monique Apodaca, and this is my AEP 855 Module 9 Case Study. And the name of our case study is When Ethics and Policies Collide. So to begin with, um, summarizing the case, what has happened? Well, first, um, Assistant Principal Richard Inman pulls two students into his office after becoming aware of a suspicious transaction in the hallway. Um, the fifth period teacher makes the Assistant Principal aware. Um, she's not sure, but she thinks it's a drug transaction. Regardless, it's a suspicious transaction between these two boys. One boy named James is a prior troublemaker. He comes from the south side of town, which happens to be the very rural and urban area of town. And the other student is David, who is an outstanding involved student. It is suspected in the story that James bullied David into holding brass knuckles for him, which is a prohibited weapon, which is a cause for expulsion. It just be as if a student brought a gun to school, that is a cause for expulsion. Finally here, I put that the school officer we know is present in the meeting, and at the end of the meeting, he arrests both boys for a felony offense because they both have a prohibited weapon on school grounds. When this situation happened, it's, it has to be later during the day. Um, it wasn't too specific, but it does say in our case study that it happens later after the morning, so later during the day. Where does this happen? Um, first, it takes place at Rocket Junior High School, um, which is like a middle school, of course. Um, we are in the assistant principal's office having this conversation. And then once both boys are arrested, they are transported to a youth detention facility. And once again, who is a part of this story? First, we have Richard Inman, which is the assistant principal of Rocket Junior High. David, who is our good student. James, who is the more troubled student, the school officer involved in the situation, the director of secondary education that reaches out to Richard Inman, the assistant principal, and tells him that he must sign the expulsion paperwork for David, or otherwise he is going to be reprimanded. And finally, I included the fifth period teacher in there because she is the one that saw the transaction between the two gentlemen. So the legal or ethical issues that I saw here, the legal issues is that a minor was forced to speak without legal representation or parent or a parent present. Um, that is illegal. Um, so that is the first legal issue that I see here. I am very confused why the assistant principal did not know that. Um, I feel like that is something that a principal needs to know in that position. Then we have the legal issue of the zero tolerance policy. I'm assuming that is written in their student handbook as well as their teacher handbook. Um, and any zero tolerance policy calls for zero toler tolerance. Um, students are expelled or suspended immediately, no questions asked. And so um, here we have expulsion for both boys and 40 day 45 days at their um, DAEP. So the program that takes delinquents in and educates them on the situations that occur. Finally, another legal issue is that Richard Inman will breach his contract as a assistant principal if he does not sign those expulsion papers for the zero tolerance policy for David. He's already signed them for James, but he has not signed them for David. Some ethical issues that I saw in this case study Again, um, you could almost put breach of contract in the ethical issue as well because the reason that Richard Inman is not signing his con um, signing the expulsion papers is because he doesn't think it's ethical. So I included that under here as well. And of course, an ethical issue is how much psychological damage was done to both of these boys, more so David because he was put in this situation um, by the other boy that bullied him. So to synthesize this case study, Richard Inman, assistant principal, refuses to comply with the zero tolerance policy regarding David's expulsion because he was supposedly bullied and wrongly accused of being in possession of a prohibited weapon on school grounds. And I just added in here that that is a legal versus ethical dilemma. 
So to synthesize the facts even more, um, again, the people involved would be Richard Inman, the assistant principal, James, which is our troubled student, David, who is our good student, the school officer involved in the situation, the directory of secondary education that reaches out to the assistant principal, and the fifth period teacher that saw the transaction. The place that this is happening at, so at Rocket Junior High, high school, so again, a middle school, and it is based in a urban community. That's why they've spoke about the South Side. Um, there's high violence on the South Side, so he busts his students into his school, which means that it's probably going to be some violent activity on campus. Then it's obviously taking place in the assistant principal's office. And finally, the boys, when they are arrested, get transferred to a youth detention facility. The programs here, obviously, this is a public junior high school. That's why um, students are able to be bused in from other parts of their city. And the other program here would be the disciplinary education program. So that's the 45-day DAEP. Uh, where the boys will be taken if they are both expelled. So reviewing and prioritizing this information, um, the people that are going to see the most damage here, depending on what happens. Richard Inman, the assistant principal, um, first he did not follow the legal policies regarding questioning David or James. So neither boy, both minors, um, had legal representation or their parent present when they were being questioned by the school officer or the policeman. Second, he could lose his job due to not complying with David's expulsion paperwork. Um, so again, there is a zero tolerance policy, which means if he does not fill out that paperwork, he is breaching his contract. David, the good student, he is also going to face some damage. Um, he may lose his future, what he wants to do, his dreams, um, and any potential that he has to do anything with his life if he's expelled. He's worked very hard, and this might be a hard hit to him. Finally, even James um, is being damaged here. He may never get out of the system that he's in. It sounds like he is constantly in and out of this youth detention facility, and his mom just doesn't seem to care. Like she said in the story, maybe he'll learn his lesson if he goes in there. Obviously, that's not working, so he may never get out of this system. Some stakeholders that still need to be contacted. I'm very confused why the principal, so Richard Inman is the assistant principal, I'm very confused why the actual principal has not been involved in this situation. Um, the Board of Education, if a policy needed to be amended, that would go to their district board. And then they should also get in touch with the district lawyers, considering that those minor boys were asked to speak to police without legal representation or parent consent. Can I learn more to make a decision? Um, yes. For David's sake, did he have an IEP or 504 for behavioral issues? If that's the case, this could be charged as manifestation, so he could not face expulsion, maybe just a short suspension. Um, I really doubt this considering he is a very well-rounded student, but that might be the case scenario. Second, are there security cameras that show that bullying was um, being that bullying was occurring um, because that could save David's case here. Um, third, again, why hasn't the pr actual principal of Rocket Junior High gotten involved? And finally, is Richard Inman aware of the legality issues of parents' rights over their minors? I'm um, still very confused why he let minors speak to the police without that consent or without representation there. So solution number one, um, Richard Inman could sign the paperwork to complete David's expulsion and both boys could attend the 45-day DAEP program. The pros of this solution is that Richard Inman keeps his job because he's following protocol. David may learn to stand up for himself in this sense and James is punished for his actions. The cons of this, however, are that the expulsion may destroy David's future and that Richard Inman, the assistant principal, feels guilty and regret for his decision making. So he will feel that probably for the rest of his life, knowing that he ruined a child's future. Solution two, um, Richard Inman could refuse to sign the expulsion paperwork for David and face reprimanding by his authorities. The pros of this solution, David does not get expelled 
and it doesn't go on his record for the future. James is punished for his actions still. And finally, Richard Inman does not feel guilt for his decision making because nothing happens to David that is detrimental, at least to his future. The cons of this are that Richard Inman may lose his job or get reprimanded in another manner, or his reputation may be tainted, he may be blackballed, and so he might not be able to get a job somewhere else as an administrator. Finally, solution three, Richard Inman could fight to amend the handbook policies for exceptions such as David. The pros of this is that the policy is amended and has exceptions for these types of situ situations, so anything down the line in the future um, they can figure out if that's an exception or if this, this student should be reprimanded. Second, David will hopefully be an exception and not be expelled. The cons of this, however, are that policy changes usually take a while to happen um, because they need to be approved by the Board of Education for the district. And second, because of that reason, David may get expelled because it fell under current policies and not under the future amended policies. So if I were Richard Inman, I would choose solution three. I would fight to have the handbook amended for that policy um, for exceptions such as David. So this means that the policy would be amended and has exceptions for these types of situations. David would hopefully be an exception and not be expelled and the policy still may take a while to be reinstated, but hopefully again, David falls under that exception when the time comes. The implementation of this policy, we first, as Richard Inman, would have to speak with the principal first regarding the handbook policies. So he still hasn't consulted the principal as far as we're aware. The principal and Richard Inman should present po um, the policy issue to the Board of Education and they should also present um, what they would like the new policy to say. So they're compromising on how to amend the previous policy um, so that the situation can be resolved. But what might happen? Number one, the board may choose not to amend the policy, which this leaves Richard Inman at a crossroad. Um, he is going to either have to sign those papers or not sign those papers if the board chooses not to amend the policy. But second, the board may choose to amend the policy, which means, is David an exception? Is he not? Is he going to get expelled? Is he not? Kind of just depends on the board's idea and decision. Who needs to know? Obviously, the principal needs to be informed at Rocket Junior High. David and his mother need to be informed. The Board of Education needs to be informed. And of course, the Director of Secondary Education that told Richard that he would be reprimanded needs to be involved and know what's going on. Can Richard deal on his own with the people involved? No, Richard Inman needs to involve the school principal first, if he has not yet, and the Board of Education to amend any policy changes. He can't amend the changes himself. Second, he should also include David and his mother because they need to be aware of trying to amend the policy. Finally, what if it doesn't work? Um, just leading back to Richard Inman, the assistant principal, is going to be faced with an ethical dilemma. He's either going to need to sign the expulsion papers for David or not. If he signs them, this puts David's future in jeopardy. If he doesn't sign it, it's going to put his own career in jeopardy. And that is the conclusion of my case study module. Thank you for viewing.